Welcome to Goldfish on Games. As we continue Amstrad Month, we're jumping into the 90s, where if you wanted a portable computer, you were going to have to spend some serious cash. Now, this was a market that Amstrad had previously tried to enter with the PPC 640. But if there was one thing that Amstrad was known for, it was finding a market where they could enter with a cheaper, simpler device. And the answer to that was the NC Notebook Computer line of machines where they boasted if you couldn't use it within five minutes, you'd get your money back. If you can't use this diary, alarm, address book, calculator and word processor in five minutes, you'll get your money back. Just £199.99, the new notepad computer from Amstrad. And just to prove how easy the machines were to use, Alan Sugar, the self-confessed computer illiterate and chairman of Amstrad Computers, wrote the introductory letter as well as the first chapter in the book. There were two main machines, the 100 and the 200, and both came with a surprisingly modern looking, if equally ineffective, slipcase. So let's take a look at each machine in turn. The NC100 was released first in 1992, and came with a very modest set of specs. A Z80 CPU running at 4MHz and just 64KB of RAM, which pulled double duty as system RAM and file storage. The screen was an 80 column by 8 row LCD, which wasn't even backlit, but you did get a contrast knob on the side. And along the other side we can find a PCM CIA slot, which allows the user to upgrade to 1 megabyte of storage. Along the rear we have three connectors, a standard 25 pin parallel port, a 9 pin serial link, and finally the DC jack. And if we flip it over we can find two battery compartments, one for four AA batteries which power the unit, and a cell battery which keeps the memory running so you don't lose your files. And apart from a decent laptop keyboard that won't break if a bit of dirt gets inside of it, that is more or less it. It's about the size of an A4 bit of paper and is about as thick as two AA batteries. So it's a very portable machine. It might have been very low spec but it was also very low priced and it was launched at just £199. The NC200 was released about a year after the 100 and now had a clamshell design and slightly better specs. The memory had been bumped to a whopping 128 kilobytes of RAM. The screen was also upgraded by doubling the number of rows and adding a backlight. And with all this extra space, they managed to fit a double-sided, double-density floppy disk drive and would read PC standard FAT12 floppy disks, which could be used while on batteries, but it really did suck the juice very quickly. And it would actually be disabled if the system didn't think there was enough power to run it. And talking of batteries, they changed from using double A's to using 5 C batteries. All this did mean that the price would increase to £349. But at a time when most portable machines were still well over £1,000, this seemed like a pretty decent option. The basic footprint of it hasn't really changed, it's still around about an A4 bit of paper. But it grew in thickness and it also gained a bit of extra weight. But overall, it was still pretty damn portable. Both run very similar software, with the 200 having a few more extra features, so let's take a look at what you could do with them. You only had a few options on the 100, a word processor, a calculator, a combination diary address book, and that was it. It might look limited, but each of these programs are more complete than you might expect. For example, the word processor is actually reasonably powerful, and allows for using various formatting options, special characters, and even some basic drawing and what was far more important to me when I used it for my schoolwork, a spell checker. It also sported some pretty advanced features, such as mail merge, which would take data from a file or from the built-in address book, or even embed documents inside other documents. All in all, it's a reasonably feature-complete word processor. The calculator, on the other hand, is actually quite basic, and didn't even support any scientific or programmer options. The diary supported adding addresses, as well as creating a schedule inside the calendar. You could also add a number of various different alarms. One feature that wasn't on the main menu but only accessible via keyboard command was BBC Basic. I used to spend a lot of time programming various games in here, more than I should have done to be honest, and while it technically has all the various commands from BBC Basic, not all of them will actually work. And it always seemed a bit odd to have BBC Basic rather than the CPC's Loco Basic as that was already coded for the Z80 processor, where BBC Basic had to be rewritten because it was targeting the 6502. As you can imagine, writing code when you can only see a few lines at a time isn't all that great, 
but that was partially solved with the NC200, which not only had more screen space for the menu, it also had more to show. The word processor itself didn't see much in the way of improvements, it just was made more useful by having the larger screen. The calculator was redrawn to look better and now had a much improved history function. While most of the diary was left unchanged, the address book was extended to allow you to add more information. The big addition was the inclusion of a spreadsheet application, and while it isn't the easiest thing to use, it does support graphing. But there was also now some built-in games, which is useful seeing that this is Goldfish on Games, and there were three of them in total, and they were all variations of Tetris. There's the classic edition, and then there's two more complex versions that included more parts and subparts, and they even managed to get some decent music out of the machine. Even though these are pretty simple machines, let's open up the NC100 and take a look inside. And I'm sure you're all shocked to see it's pretty basic. Because as you can imagine, the Z80 CPU is doing pretty much most of the work, and we can spot it right here. And not far from there is the RAM and ROM chips, and then the rest of it is a few logic chips just to glue it all together. Now it would be a bit remiss of me to not mention the Amstrad NC150 which effectively was an NC100 sporting the NC200 firmware, but it was also upgraded to 128 kilobytes of RAM, but it still had the same 8-row, non-backlit screen. When I upgraded from the 100 to the 200, I had to copy all my files across, and I did this using a serial cable, as the only other option would have been to use a PCM CIA card, which I didn't own because they were way too expensive to buy at the time. But thankfully from there I was able to actually save all my documents to a floppy disk, which I still have today. And I was actually able to use that to get the games back onto the machines that I picked up recently, so I could check them out again. And as you can imagine, most of them were pretty basic, while they were written in that language. But it seems other people also were interested in making games for this machine, and use a combination of BASIC as well as Z80 assembly, and I got a few of them onto this model, and they really do look quite impressive. A link to where you can download these games can be found in the description. In typical Amstrad fashion, these were mostly aimed at the European market, but they did license the hardware out to a company in America, called NTS who replaced the software and put them in these snazzy white cases and released them as the Dreamwriter 100 and 200. All I really know about these machines is what I found online, because I've never seen one in person. As far as I'm aware, the NC200 pretty much was the last custom computer from Amstrad, and while it wasn't a gaming powerhouse, I will always be happy to have one, as I use one every day for my schoolwork, so I'll always have a bit of a fondness for it. And until next time, I've been the Goldfish, these were known as Alan's Babies, and this was Goldfish on Games. Goodbye. Thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please consider liking and subscribing as it really helps the channel grow. Also, you can check out other videos that I've done by clicking on the links on the screen.